The Archer's Choice TV Show with America's favorite bow hunting couple, Ralph and Vicky Cianciarulo. There's something about a redhead that drives us all crazy in the springtime. Could it be the way they strut their stuff? Or how full figure they look when they puff up in front of an audience? Nah, there's just something about those darn old beautiful redheads that get us all feathered up. Well, you might have guessed it. We are talking about the wild turkey. And nothing can compare to the thrill of sitting in the woods right as everything is coming back to life. The trees are blossoming, the wildlife is abundant, and everything is out in search of a new beginning. The morning light appears from the horizon, and the first gobble of the year sends chills and excitement rushing through our veins. We quickly scan the area to make sure we selected the right spot. Look out at the decoys, make sure we have a clear shooting lane, check for clearance in the blind, and reach down and grab our very inviting old mama hen box call to let all the boys know we have what they want. And all they have to do is fly down and come over to strip their stuff. Is that a bear or what? Look at the size of this bear! He's a loser! Redheads! We love redheads! Talking turkeys? Yes, yes. We're talking. This isn't red. <laughs> we're talking it's about red. we're talking about springtime. Hoi bows, oh. double bull bows, oh, we're talking our goblin oh, bears, okay. our demon arrows, oh, turkey we're talking calls, decoys. Yes, yes. yes oh, that's what we're okay. I'm just making sure. I, yes, ma'am. You know, there's nothing better in the springtime when you're getting all set up, and all of a sudden you have that big old gobbler, that big old Tom coming in, he's full strut, and you make that perfect shot. That is an awesome feeling. We've got some incredible redhead action coming your way. Every year we head out to South Dakota and the birds weren't doing really what we wanted them to. We finally split one off and we were kind of walking through a valley and cutting and calling like, trying to sound like a big troop of turkeys moving through the woods, a few hens. And we had a bird answering us but we couldn't call them in. And as we rounded the corner in this, in this little creek bottom, we could see the birds strutting coming through the timber. So we backed off real quick, set up the blind and just made a few real soft, quiet calls and sure enough, here he come. When you're putting the blind up, we always do it. I mean, we don't care where we set the blind. It just doesn't seem to matter. As long as it doesn't flap in the wind and the birds can't see moving around inside, they're going to come into it. One mistake a lot of guys make when they hunt from a blind is they roost the birds the night before, slip in there early that next morning, and if it's a real calm, quiet morning, you can't, I mean, you can get too close to the birds. If they hear you setting up that blind and you're making some commotion doing it, they may act like they don't hear you in the morning, they'll be gobbling their heads off, but nine times out of 10, they're gonna fly the other way because something was wrong there. So you can set up too close in the mornings on birds.
That was, that was one of those hunts where after I made the shot, the bird, he stumbled a few steps, fell down in the creek. We just jumped out of the blind, went and picked him up out of the water. And it was one of those hunts where you get a different feeling about it because you weren't really expecting it to happen. The, the morning started out wrong, the birds were with hens, and they left early. And when something like that finally comes together, it's just it, it makes it all that much more rewarding when you got something different about the hunt to talk about. It's just not a classic hunt. So you see this big fan just coming around the corner, you know. That was one of those birds that was just, he was committed. Oh, man, he was, <laughs> yeah. He I think he'd have walked right to the wall. Oh, yeah, I came in full drop, and Dave goes, no, wait, 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 they're going to come to the decoys. Welcome back to the Archer's Choice. Hey, Ralph, I have a question. Sure. If I were to dye my hair red, would you pay more attention to me? <laughs> Probably during the springtime. <laughs> oh, he's funny. Hey, th this next time, we're going to take Heath, our producer, and we're gonna take him back out. He's gonna go. He's gonna go hunt his own redheads. Oh yeah, he's gonna have a blast. Check this out. Getting lucky. <laughs> One of the best tips that I can share with you is when you're bow hunting turkeys, set your decoys very close to the blind. I'm talking five or ten yards. What happens with a turkey when they're approaching decoys is one of two things. They're either going to hang up 20 yards outside the decoys, well that's still going to give you a 25 yard shot. The other thing is, is if they come into the decoys, then you've got a five yard shot. So always put your decoys close to the blind and try to, if you hunt over Jake, try to have him facing the blind so if that big Tom comes in there and wants to make eye contact, he's actually turning his back to you at less than five yards. That is exciting. High five. Woo! Blast. It was a blast. This Tom had to be standing. Wide out here. That was no more than about five or six yards. That's unbelievable. He took off this way. Looks like you came right through here. sign right there. Definitely a good sign. He kept a little feathers on there. 
we definitely couldn't have gone too much farther. Got a decent blood trail. This has got to be one of my best hunts ever. Woo! My first turkey with a bow. He comes strutting in, you saw him, right into the, the buckwing decoys. We had that string attached to his tail, giving, giving him some action. Whoo! That double bull allows you to get close and get real personal. Unbelievable. Mm-mm-mm. Man, oh man. Hi, welcome back to the Archer's Choice. Hey Vic, I heard you got some really good turkey action down in Tennessee. I did, check this one out. Turkey hunting can be pretty challenging. One of the main challenges is their eyesight. You have to be so careful not to make any movements. Whether you're in a blind or not, you need to really be careful with the movement. The other big challenge is the size of the vitals. They have very small vitals and you really need to make sure you know your shot placement. There's a lot of excitement when you're turkey hunting, and it's not all if you're able just to take a bird. A lot of the excitement is getting into those areas, finding where they're roosting, doing the calling, having them responding back to you, and then actually coming to you and into your shot area. Well, this morning we got set up for some birds in another area. Didn't have any really come in or anything like that. We came to set up a blind this, this afternoon, late this morning, so we could hunt it this afternoon. And we heard some goblins, just old goblin over the hill. So we got set up real quick, set up throughout a decoy, and Mike started doing some calling. We had one Jake come through, we heard him putting. He, can't, he, he heard or saw Mike maybe or saw us or didn't like something, but these four Jakes came up, four birds came up. They milled around in here and went, and we thought they left. And they came back up again, and they saw, they finally saw a decoy, and gosh, the shot wasn't even 10 yards, and he went maybe 60. But this is my first Eastern with my bow, so I am very excited here. This is, this is great. Welcome back to the Archer's Choice. Now, Ralph, I do have a question for you. Yeah. Do you have a problem with hitting turkeys? <laughs> you, know, like, yeah, you know what? I might not hit them the first time. But I got my redhead the second time. Check this one out.
Because your turkey was bigger than mine. But I so got mine. much bigger. I mean, come on. But I got mine on the first shot. Vic, that bird, my bird came in so close, so fast, that I tried to shoot him away. So I had a better shot at a little bit of distance. Because it just was it was like heat shot. I didn't want heat shot. I wanted a farther shot. I wanted it more you know challenging. What? I don't have my boots on, and we need to close the show. Hey, folks, we hope you enjoyed this week's show on bow hunting redheads. <laughs> and remember to come back next week at the same time, same station, right here on, on the Archer's, Archer's Choice. Choice.